Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder. Today we're at Leroy and Lewis and we got a whole bunch of food. We have bacon rib, we have beef cheek, we have brisket, we have sausage, we have whole hog, all kinds of stuff. So stick around to check out our experience. Usually in the morning, you go grab some coffee and then you get into a barbecue line. But when you're going to Leroy and Lewis, conveniently, it's located alongside Cosmic Coffee and Beer Garden. So I'm gonna go in, probably get two coffees and then go get in the line and just relax in the nice weather for the first day we have here in Austin. I almost feel bad telling everybody about it because right now I'm sure it's great for people who just want to come and get amazing food and not wait forever but it's so good, people deserve to know, man. Uh, right, we're first in line here today. They open in about an hour and 15. There's nobody even lined up yet, which is incredible. It's a top five barbecue place. So if you wanna go to Austin, eat top five barbecue, and not get in line at six in the morning, this seems to be a winning ticket. And even if the line is a little longer, you show up and you get coffee and you hang out in this nice little coffee slash beer garden and enjoy yourself, and then you get in line. I mean, I'm excited about this. <laughs> Holy shnikes. <laughs> mm. the, the names of the sauces I forgot. But the hottest one is Holy Schnikes. <laughs> mm. All right, so conveniently, we look who we ran into in line, one yeah. Joseph R. Yin. <laughs> Joe, you've worked at Terry Black's, you've worked at Leroy and Lewis, mm -hmm. you've worked at Truth. You have been very familiarized with Central Texas barbecue. What yeah. is cool and unique about Leroy and Lewis? Like, what makes it special? Today, I mean, we're here on a Saturday, so we're gonna, they're gonna have some brisket. But, brisket. I mean, but today and tomorrow are the only days that they're gonna have yeah. it. You know, throughout the week they won't, but you know, the beef cheeks were something that, that was their answer to having brisket, yeah. which even when I was working here, and it was still popular at that time, we were still trying to convince people to get it. But now, it sells out within a couple hours. Yeah. The burgers are also a big thing that they do here. Today they'll have the bacon rib, which is also a big seller. So, Looking forward to that for yeah. sure. So I mean, here it's just like, you know, the style of cooking that they do, while it is very central Texas mm -hmm. with an offset and the direct pit, but they're putting their own twist on cooking techniques, different flavor profiles and things like that, which is why I decided to come here for a little bit just to you know, yeah. scratch that itch, you know? To me, it seems like they're taking the tools of Central Texas, like offset smoker cooking, yeah. and then applying it to different foods, different flavor profiles. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. What are you gonna get? To be honest with you, I don't even know what they have on the menu anymore. So let's I'm go look at the see, menu. Yeah. <laughs> My mouth's watering. First thing, gotta, gotta give you a bacon rib. Excellent. Saturday, oh. house cured, house cut. Saturday special. <laughs> there we go. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, there we go. That looks so good. We should. Like, Brad, we gotta eat this food. Big cheeks, man. How many want wingy? You know, normally that would be me, but right now it's like, Jeremy want bacon rib. All right, so Joe, you gotta help me eat this. Obviously, this is too much for any one human being. Yep. Might be too much for the three of us. Yeah. But uh, I say we start with pork and then move on to beef because I don't think we want to go beef and then pork. Yeah, that's true. All right. This sausage, 
you know what's in it? Like what kind of sausage? Uh, so it's like, uh, I think it's their citrus hop sausage. So it's okay. an all pork sausage. This is, I think, when they're do breaking down the hog. Mm. They just use the, I th think they use the ham just because it's leaner. Okay. And then they can mix in their right ratio with the fat with it. So they can kind of, you know, make sure that the ratio of that fat to the to meat is as close as they want to get to. Instead of using pork butt where it's kind of like a mishmash of everything. Gotcha, so, yeah. gotcha. So if you're wondering if it's juicy, it's juicy. You taste the hops. The bitterness balances out like fattiness and richness. I don't know, it kind of has like an acidic flavor to it just because of how the hops are. And so you get that like richness up front. And it kind of like changes halfway through the bite. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. It's like it starts off tasting like one sausage. And then by the time you're done chewing it, it tastes like a different right, sausage. Right. A little bit of brown sauce. Yeah, beet barbecue sauce there. That's really good. Yeah. A lot of black pepper in there, which I like. Yeah. I like black pepper. It's I want to nice. try this whole hog. There we go. Get some of the crispy skin. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Now, one of the super cool things, and if you come to the Leroy and Lewis class, you'll see them do this, is they actually break down a whole hog. They'll cut out certain parts, like they'll separate off the skin. And so this crispy skin, they didn't go just buy some chicharrones. They made this. And then they cooked the whole hog on a direct heat pit. So it's really cool combining a lot of different styles of barbecue all in one. So let's give this a try. Looks like there's some chili flakes. Do they hit this with chili flakes mm -hmm. and vinegar? Yeah, so this is kind of like their take on like Carolina style barbecue as well. Yeah. So there's a little bit of vinegar, there's a little bit of heat to it. So it's not just, you know, just quick cooked down like that. Definitely get a bite with the skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah. This would make like the most killer sandwich. Try with the uh, with the mustard sauce. The mustard sauce. Yeah. I like mustard, so I have a feeling I'm really gonna like it. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Poor cash. As somebody who eats rice like every single day of his life, I appreciate that there's a dish with rice. Oh man. Yeah. This that's is probably so one of staff favorite. When I'm on the truck, sometimes I would just do like a slice of bread and put some of that hash in there. Dude. And then put the scallion on top. It's really good. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. There's some acidity in there too that like really balances the fattiness. That's right. so good. Yeah, it's similar to the hog, except it's more of that pork gravy yeah. version of that. Yeah, pork um, gravy. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just, um, yeah, it's mm. just, it is balanced. It's not just cooked down pork yep. that's thrown over rice. You know, there is balance in the entire thing. And the scallions on top definitely, you know, yeah. give that a little bit of brightness that you need. Yep. Um, Lots of umami there. Lots of umami. That's bacon umami rib time? Bacon rib time. Is it bacon? All right. So now we come to the main portion of the show. We're gonna eat this bacon rib. This is something I've been looking forward to the entire time I've been driving to Austin, the entire time that I've been here. I know that I wanna eat this bacon rib. So I don't know if anybody else is doing anything like this. They are curing this themselves. This is the portion of the program we've all been waiting for. All right. Look at this. Bacon rib. What do you think, Joe? I've actually, I haven't had it yet, so. You haven't eaten it? I've had like one bite a long time ago, but uh, it's been a while. Just smell it, man. The yeah. smell is incredible. It's like, if you like bacon and you like barbecue, yeah. which basically just means you're a good person. Just, just hold up real quick. So for people who don't know, like when we're talking about the spare rib right here, that's a bone for the spare rib. This is like that rib tip portion because you see where the cartilage mm -hmm. is. When you go to butcher shops and you ask for spare ribs, they'll usually won't be that much meat on it because they take off all the meat off just for that pork belly because you can make a lot more money selling bacon and stuff sure. like that. So yeah, and, that's what it's for. And the reason that they can do this is because they're breaking down hogs. Exactly. Right. So most places they're ordering in, you know, packs of spare ribs and they might trim the spare ribs, cut, cut out the breastbone and stuff like that, but they're not breaking down a whole hog. So. The fact that they can do this is based on their butchery skills, which is really, really cool. Take a bite, take a bite. And it's It'll, sticky on the yeah. outside. That was a good looking bite right there. Oh, <laughs> makes you want to cry. That is the juiciest bite of barbecue I've ever eaten in my whole life. That is so good. <laughs> Joe, you got to try this. All right, let's it do is it. so good. It's like all the fat is rendered, so like when you you squeeze down with your teeth, it just shoots out juice. Joseph, all right, I pass the torch this. to you. Oh gosh, 
Yeah, this is delicate Ooh. right here. Where should I take a bite from? That side. Right? Yeah. Yep, I usually only, um, <laughs> I've only had a bite of that before because um, we're just sitting on the truck and we're like, we should all just take a bite. It is Dude, really good. That is incredible. Oh wow. my goodness, man. It is what a great than, idea. It's not super salty like you would think yep. of like bacon. And there's some sweetness too. Yeah, they put that maple glaze on there. The one thing that I, I like bacon, but too much of it, like yep. if you were to get this, this thick piece of just straight bacon, yep. it'd be way too salty. Somebody's like, bacon, great. Barbecue, great. Let's do like barbecue bacon on a rib. It's a really cool yes. idea. Let's uh, try some beef cheek here. Can you show this? Yeah. <laughs> that is gelatin, my friends. It's sticking to your fingers. That's exactly what you want. But that sauce is good, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. So here, you see all of that hydrolyzed collagen, and it just makes it super succulent. And when you take a bite, you're not like chewing on anything. It just kind of disappears and coats the inside of your mouth. And you're like, that was rich and delicious. It's unbelievable. And they actually confit these. So it's barky on the outside, but nothing dried out. Nothing is going to be burnt or charred or anything like that. It, what you're seeing is incredible bark, incredible breakdown of fat, and gelatin. You need to hurry up and get in there with us. Got it. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I have to remedy a situation that just happened. Yep. My wife has never had a beef cheek. Let me warn you, before eating this, your life will have been one way, and then after you take this bite, your life will be a completely different way. Just so you know. Next brisket. For anybody who's wondering what I'm talking about when I say fat render, it's this. Like the fat has become integrated with the bark. So there's seasoning, there's smoke, and there's this fat that is cooked down so that each bite is just a burst of flavor. It's juicy, smoky, and everything you want in barbecue. Notice that nothing is burned, but mm -hmm. it's bark. Foil boat is for this purpose. This is like the pinnacle of barbecue right here to me. Crispy bark is hard to deny, man. Hard. Right. You can achieve it in different ways, but this is a very, very specific way to do it. Yep. And like we were talking about in the car and during this entire trip, yep. I tried brisket at other places and they do the foil bow. Yep. There's something very special about you waiting in line and getting it specifically from this food truck that tastes different. I really want to try this. So they make the beef chorizo. Okay. Yeah, I was munching on this on the truck last time I was here. So. You dirty dog. You guys aren't eating, I can get up the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's Dude. good. It's good. That's so good. Man. I just want like a tortilla chip. All right. I was going to say, it's like the perfect filling for a taco. Yeah. All right. I think this is the, the chili. I remember Frito Pies from when I was in high school. You have those little bags of Fritos and yeah. throw in some like crappy chili and some cheese sauce yeah. and stuff. That stuff dreams of being this. Yeah. Yeah. It's the ground beef from yeah. the brisket itself. Like no one's really so using good. brisket back in the day to make, yeah. you know, chili or walking tacos or whatever you want to yeah. call it. I mean, high quality meat that yeah. they're using for right. that. So, I mean, gosh. It's probably one of the new favorite things that people usually yep. come for. And the kale Caesar slaw is probably one of the oldest items on the menu that they had. I think yeah. this was still there with the very first time I tried their food, um, but it's just, it's just a unique idea. I mean, it's it's a slaw, but it's something that people are familiar with, like a Caesar salad, you yeah. know? It's a great idea. Yeah, and I think people are gonna want something green and crunchy Yeah. after eating something like that bacon right. rib. That's great, yeah. I don't always eat vegetables, but when I do, they have to taste good, and this tastes great. I can't believe I'm eating kale right now and liking it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of kale, to be honest with you, but yeah. in this salad, it just brings a lot more body to the slaw itself yeah. without it just being patched. You know? Gotta try the Leroy and Lewis brisket burger. These are brisket trim that get smoked and then seared in the firebox on a hot griddle. You get smoke and you get Maillard reaction. So it's like a reverse sear, 
or with brisket trim. They grind it themselves so it's extra juicy. And of course, we have a little cheese, caramelized onion, a little sauce, and pickles. It's burger time. Look at that. I'm reminded of Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction. That is a tasty <laughs> burger. Do they speak I mean, English I, we'll, in what? We'll do it, we'll do it. Little bit of sauce. There we go. I mean, just look at like the grind of it. It's not, uh, it's not grind up trying to too much. So it's still pretty coarse. Of course, yeah. So it has that still, that texture that you're looking for. It's not exactly. super smooth, you know, which yep. I like a lot. But, yeah. Let's go for it. Such a good burger. It's so good. Such a good burger. This is a burger you would travel for. See the smoke ring on the outside? You get the smoke, you get black pepper. And I think the coarse grind helps it kind of fall apart when you take a bite. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not overworked. It's not like it's a exactly. like a block of meatloaf or something like that or a meatball, right? It still has that texture where it is still falling apart. Yeah. But it's seasoned exactly the same way that the brisket is, right? It has that bark on the outside and then you reset the bark with searing off the sides of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is, I mean, it is really, you know, most people think like burger as in like, it's a difference between grilling and barbecue. This is a barbecued burger. Yeah. Right? It's like <laughs> normally people think barbecue burger is like a normal burger that you do and then they mm -hmm. put barbecue sauce on it. But this is a smoked and seared off burger. Yeah, this is how a pit master cooks a burger. Yeah. So good, man. Yeah. If you have to choose a standout thing, what is it? I love everything on here. The reason why I almost worked with Evan in the, in the very beginning is because I had the beef cheese. Before yeah. this entire place existed, like there was nothing here other than his trailer. Oh uh yeah? -huh. Right? So the fact that I came here and I wanted to work on it just because I took a bite of that, but that is now one portion of an extremely amazing tray of food. I do think that the brisket is also something that is way different, right? Yep. The, the bacon rib is also something that a lot of people are doing now, but they're one of the first people to do it. As I talk about all that kind of stuff, honestly, my personal favorite thing, the hog is honestly like the hog sandwich when they yeah. put the kimchi, the barbecue sauce, the herbs on there. They have is, kimchi? Yeah. I love kimchi. Like that sandwich for me is one of my favorite barbecue sandwiches. Just That sounds incredible. So, yeah. if, if I could choose three bites, the bite that I took on the end of the uh -huh. bacon rib, yeah where there was connective tissue that had broken down, it's sweet on the outside, there's lots of black pepper, there's smoke, and it is incredibly juicy with rendered fat. That was a, okay, I'm gonna put this in the back of my head and never forget that right, bite. Right. The beef cheek, it recalled when I had one of those experiences the last mm -hmm. time I ate a beef cheek, and I was like, oh man, this is just like velvety texture on yeah. the inside, it's amazing. That's what it did for me, the very first time I was at Leroy and Lewis and I had that bite. Yeah, yeah. and then these end cuts from these, these little, I guess they're kind of like burn ends, mm -hmm. Um, from the brisket, you have the crunchy outside, yeah. like black pepper crust, and then you bite into it and there's that rendered fat that just makes it super juicy. Those are the three bites that I'm gonna walk away with, but the thing I was the most surprised by was the brisket burger. Yeah. I was like, ah, yeah. brisket burger, cool, whatever, let's try it. And then I take a bite and I'm like, this is wonderful. Right. It's all just so good. I gotta be fair, if I have a point of criticism, it would be, I think maybe, like the sausage was a little more hops than I would prefer. I mean, still really good, yeah. but maybe like the bitterness on the back end is maybe more than I would want. But probably after eating a bunch of this super fatty stuff and then you take a bite of sausage, yeah. those kind of cancel out and even out, yeah. you know? But we started with that, yeah. so. Hold on, I gotta try, I gotta take a bite of the bacon portion of the bacon rib. Here, I'm, I'm gonna go with this. Yeah. Oh, good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we are, yeah. yeah. Let me, let me swallow this food. Of course. You like science? Kind of. Excellent. You like barbecue? Yeah. <laughs> My kind of guy. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What's your name? Zach. Zach, nice Zach. to meet you, Zach. Okay, important pro tip. If you get here at uh, 10, 15, golden. You're like the third person in line. If you get here at 11, you're like the 487th person in line. So getting here a little early will do you tremendous favors. If you want to get this bacon rib, get here 10, 10, 15, you should be good. All right, that's the food at Leroy and Lewis. So if you want incredible barbecue and you don't want to get in line at 6 a.m., you should show up. If you want coffee, you know, a couple steps away from where you're waiting in line, which is clutch, this is a great place. 
And of course, the food is absolutely incredible. It's not a surprise to me at all that they're in the top five on the Texas Monthly list. If you ever get a chance and you're in Austin, come down and check it out. I highly, highly recommend it. With all that said, I feel extra honored that they used the thousand gallon pit that we're doing for the giveaway to cook some of their food. Now it feels like it's been you know, touched by an angel, a meat angel maybe. But if you guys wanna win that smoker, click on the link in the description and it can be yours. So click on the link in the description to win that. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see more Mad Scientist Barbecue content, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. Tell me like it. Tell me one wingy. See? It, it was just like that. Tell me one wingy. <laughs> That's how you did it.